Salut. We're Beth. And Patrick. And we're moving to France. We're transforming an old townhouse into our home and an artsy event space. So come on along. Bonjour et bienvenue à tous. Hello and welcome. Today's video is all about plumbing and the upstairs bathroom, what we call the TARDIS bathroom. In this part, I concentrate on disconnecting the old water supply and the old plumbing and being able to basically demo the bathroom, get all the old fixtures out and get it ready for the new work. Plus, I start roughing in the waste pipe part of the plumbing. So one of the first challenges of this project is to figure out how to disconnect the hot and the cold water supply lines so I can demo the bathroom. The water lines don't have shutoff valves nearby, so I have to trace them back to a reasonable spot to cut and cap them. I plan to run new lines into the bathroom from the back wall, so I don't need these. Look at how the copper lines snake along the baseboard, into the bed nook, into the vestibule, and disappear through the wall. Let's see where they go from there. Inside the old stairwell attached to another bathroom is where things make more sense. The hot and cold are tied together with other supply lines. We have a couple of valves, but which way is the water flowing? Will the valves shut off the water so that I can cut and cap the lines? So here's how we figure out which one of the two pipes is the hot. We turn on the hot water and see which pipe gets hot. So if we come down here, whoop, that one's hot, that one's not. So the top one is hot, whoop, that one's hot now, that one's not. So the hot is coming through, but this is not hot, so the water is fed from these two different gauge hots. It feeds over into the bathroom, but it also feeds through this valve down and into this other bathroom. So, this valve is not going to help us for the hot, but this valve is the cold, and if we turn it off, it has to be feeding to the bathroom, because there's no other tie-in to it. So, I think I just turned the cold off. Let's go find out. Hot's still running. Does the cold work? Nope. That's, that's off. So we should be able to cut into that line. Okay. Gonna try to use compression fitting. Never used one before. Watched a lot of videos. We'll see. impressed with that. Now the next one we do is the hot, but we can't do it here. We can't cut it here. And we have to cut it. The feed comes down, goes back where we just were to feed the other bathroom. And we have to cut it over here. That feeds into that bathroom. So we'll cut it here. We need to turn the hot water off, but I don't want to turn the whole house off. So we're going to go down to the boiler and see if there's a cutoff valve there. So here's our boiler. It runs, it runs the radiator heaters and the hot water for the house. I think it's, I think it's this valve because it's hot and it's running upstairs. But just to be sure. I'm gonna go ahead and close this one too. This one's cold, so I don't think this is, but. Hot water. 
water is not running. Tap is warm. It is running when we left it, but it's it's done. So now I should be able to cut that pipe. All right, back in it. Still holding. No leaks at all. That's the cold. And then hot. Yep, that is hot. In fact, I gotta let that cool down before I cut into it, I think. Because uh, I don't want to get scalded. Back when it cools down. Okay. The moment of truth arrived. turned on these valves again. I don't hear any leaking. If I had a, if the, if the compression cap didn't work, I would hear hissing because I would hear water flowing through here. So I'm gonna go upstairs and check it, but I think I've got it sealed off. Hot's back on. No leaks. I think we're good. That's under, that's fully pressurized. There's the pipe that goes to the bathroom. Let's go check it. All dead. Let's check the bidet. Dead. Dead. Yay, we can now demo the bathroom. So the idea is that I'm gonna have a walk-in shower here. These are Italian style showers. They're really, I just love them. They're like what you see at a hotel where they're very flat and then you have a glass panel on one side and you just walk into them. And you will get some, some spray here, but not as much as you think. And one of the su uh, suggestions I got was to put, was to seal this wood floor with exterior um, sealant like a deck sealant, which I bought. Um, so I'm gonna do that before I actually install anything. But right now I'm trying to rough in the plumbing and that's, that's where I'm at at this point. So I took off the, uh, the baseboard because I am going to be putting on panels, not tiling. They make these really cool panels that are basically the, the size of a shower and they go up about two meters and they're, they're pre-made, and then you just glue them to the wall and adhere some caulking in the middle, and they look really great. And then you don't have to worry about any kind of um, leaking between the tiles. I mean, you can do tiles. Tiling can be done really well, but I haven't done much tiling, so I thought this was an easier solution to use some panels, which were still waiting to be delivered. But in order to do those correctly, I had to remove the baseboard and snug this pan up all the way up to the edge because that panel needs to sit right on top of there, on top of the shower, and then I'll put caulking there. So we're trying to go with as few seams as possible so we'll have the fewest leaks possible, hopefully none. So I removed the baseboard and 
that will allow me to correctly position the drain hole that I'm going to cut in the base uh, in the floorboard. Uh, the old drain is going to be decommissioned. It's already un not hooked up. Um, and this vent is going to be blocked up because we have a, another vent. They both connect to the same stack that goes up to the roof. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a, they're passive vents. I'm going to put a fan in that one so and put it on the, on the switch so that when the light's on, it always uh, draws air out and we won't get any moisture built up in here. So I can block this one off. Overall, I think the pan, the shower tray is pretty good. The back corner is right even with the wall. Here it comes out. Don't let this fool you. This is paper. It comes out a little bit, but I can backfill this. I have to fill this in anyway um, with mortar or some other product because um, it's all broken and chipped up. So I'm going to, I'll build it out a little bit. And the reason I have it like this is because what I want is the front of the shower to line up here because this is where you walk in. This is where the glass divider is going to be. So you're going to, you're always going to walk in and see this. So this is the position that I want for the shower. So stay tuned. I decided that I needed to pull up these floorboards if I was going to do this correctly. Luckily, these floorboards are tongue and groove pine and they're top nailed only on the ends. So that makes it a lot easier to get them out. So I'm going to pull up actually three more because uh, after thinking this through a little bit more, sometimes it takes me a while to, to think about it, but the toilet's going to be here. It is going to be a down drain. It's a four, uh, let's see, it's a 10 centimeter pipe. It's going to come through and it's going to go out the wall. I'm going to tie everything into that. So I only have to go through this wall one time. The shower pan goes here and I've already cut the hole for the bottom drain. And I actually had to uh, nibble away at this joist, but there's a lot left and it's not a problem. It's just to make it fit a little bit better. So that will only be a 40 centimeter, sorry, four centimeter line that um, saddles onto the main line. So that can go there. And then the sink, which I'm placing or I'm I'm trying to figure out exactly where to put it. I think this is it. That will also be a four centimeter line and that will go over. I don't know exactly how. I think I'm gonna have to get a flex line and send it over into the, the main line, the 10 centimeter line for the toilet. So they all go in that way. And then the they actually uh, connect to a, they're gonna go out the back into the attic and then there's going to be a vent there so uh, there already is a vent there okay so here we are in our little half attic this is the back of the old original house so this is the drain you can actually see into the bathroom this is where the shower drain was in the corner and that it's about a foot through the wall. Um, the little vent, the grill vent, goes there and then it goes up to the ceiling. And if you go down, this, this vent is going into our little hall bathroom downstairs. And that's what I'm gonna tie into. The drains, for the sink and the bidet came out over here. So the plan for the plumbing for this bathroom is everything is gonna tie, all the waste is gonna tie into a four centimeter, sorry, uh, 100 millimeter, 10 centimeter waste pipe. 
which happens to be the same as these vents, but it will be the waste. And I am going to tie it all in under the floorboards and exit here. So then I'm gonna come out with the four inch line and then elbow it, sorry, Oop. come out, elbow it, and then tie it down to the bathroom here, uh, downstairs, which is has a toilet already. All right, well, I got a hole through that wall. So I put this four inch or so, sorry, four centimeter waste pipe hole through that wall. Thank goodness it's very friable, soft uh, calcium or limestone. So it took me a couple hours. I drilled, um, I don't know, 10, 10 um, holes through it and then just kind of chipped it away uh, on the advice of um, a guy here. Worked out well, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, it only took, I guess all in all, it was about an hour's worth of work, but I took some breaks. But um, so anyway, I've got the waste pipe. Everything's gonna tie into this. So one thing about this bathroom is that strangely enough, it has a skylight. It's a little dirty. It's just a piece of frosted glass. And I'm gonna go show you how that works in the attic. These steps are really old. Old, old, old. Here is above the bathroom. I had to uncover it. There was stuff everywhere. This is a door and it is somehow affixed. Well, it's screwed down to some timbers and stuff. And then down here is, oops, almost fell. Here is above the bathroom. That's glass. And there's this old hardware cloth. And this looks like sawdust for insulation maybe. And then the light comes from a window that looks permanently affixed. I don't think I can open that. I don't see any hardware on it. I don't know. And you can't see through, but there's a pretty nice view. But it lets in good light. And we're thinking about keeping this as a skylight, but we also um, need some ventilation, some active ventilation. So we're not quite sure what we're going to do yet. So I think the first step is to uncover this and clean it up, get rid of all the debris, I guess, and then eventually we'll, we will insulate it. But that glass pane will pop right out and we can clean it and uh, have a skylight. So that was part one. Hope you enjoyed it and I hope you come along for the rest of this project. Thanks for watching y'all. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next video.